Hey everyone, Josh here with another video tutorial for Sony Vegas 13, 14, and 15. I'm going to be using Sony Vegas 14 for this video, and this is going to show you how to get the best cinematic look and project settings and an explanation of all of it for your footage. Now the first thing you want to know before you get started is you got to have the right footage, the right source footage. I shot some footage of my wife shooting an airsoft gun and I used my Panasonic G7 which can shoot in the proper cinematic frame rate of 23.976 frames a second or 24 frames a second because it's so virtually close. But if you use the PAL system you'll be using 25 frames a second. So that's going to be the kind of source footage you're going to need to achieve this look. That's key first. Second, you're going to have to have some good lighting. If it's in poor lighting, you either have to have a really good camera to compensate for that ISO and that graininess that's going to follow, or you're just going to have to get some better lighting. If you saw the last video, I also shot in 60 frames a second, so I can implement some slow motion into this cinematic shot. So I'm about to play a before video on what this project's going to be like, and then an after video with all of the cinematic effects and everything added. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to make that. So the first step in making your footage look cinematic is adjusting the color curve, which darkens shadows and dims reflections. Basically it just enhances the footage to make it look a lot better. At least it's a good first step. Now you can either do this through the software, Sony Vegas, or if your camera has a setting on it like mine did, you can adjust it manually in the raw footage itself. Now it's it's recommended to adjust it just a little bit, but not too much, because you want to give yourself leeway for editing and not try to do all the editing on the raw footage. So I created some presets and added the word cinematic into all of them so I could quickly get to them. So we got cinematic, and here are some effects. The first thing is color curves. So I already have a cinematic color curve right here, but I'm going to show you from default. Drag, you can drop them onto the timeline so you don't have to adjust each clip individually. Now, what you want it to look like, and I'm going to show you the final product but explain a little bit, is this. This is my preference, and it's really easy to get to. It's not too much, it's not too little, um, but this is, our, this is also color curving on some already color curved footage, so you may adjust yours a little bit more. So, default. All you want to do is drag these little guys, these little notches, down to the bottom. And then drag this one up to the top. You're getting it about a fourth of the way, roughly. One, two, three, four. You're making it about a fourth of the way to the right hand side, to the left hand side. So, but this will show you what happens if you do it too much you'll see the darks get real dark. It starts looking unrealistic. But, I mean, if you're going for the effect of kind of like a nighttime or really dark scene, yeah, you'd want to use that. But, since we're outside, we're gonna go right about here. And for this one, if you were to bring it too much, you're over brightening everything. Maybe bring this down, you're darkening it. You know, you see the difference when you do this. And so, a perfect spot that I found is roughly right about here. Now it's on and off, you can tell the difference. It's almost like a gray film on the raw footage that you're getting rid of when you add it. You can see it enhances it awesomely. So that's step one. Step two is brightness and contrast. Now, when you color curve something, you kind of are messing with the brightness and contrast, but you also aren't at the same time. You're messing with specific deep darks and specific highlights with color curve, but with brightness and contrast, you're actually adjusting that just that the brightness and contrast of the footage so let's drag and drop that on there I have a preset as well 
cinematic dark scene. Right now this is a dark scene that it's enhancing, even though we're outside. I'm gonna reverse that really though. So with a dark scene, you wanna adjust the brightness a little bit and the contrast a little bit more. But with a bright scene, let's just put a negative. These are the two magic numbers I found. You see it didn't add the gray film back on, that gray film, but it did darken the footage just a little bit. If the sun was directly beaming on us, you'd want to reduce the brightness of this footage. So I'm gonna leave it on and show you step three, which is to sharpen. When you sharpen something, you're dynamically making the lines stand out a little bit more. So here's a good example. So this is normal footage with no sharpening. So if you really wanna see the brightness and contrast define, you start increasing the sharpening of it from zero I'll show you, let's just show you maxed out 100 and then back to zero. And you see the difference what I'm talking about. So kind of you see in between the lines right here, the interlaced wood, you can kind of see it just dynamically popping out. But too much sharpening looks terrible sometimes. So what I'm gonna do is put it right back in my sweet spot, which is 20. Now you can have a different sweet spot, but for my footage, 20 works perfectly well. The fourth thing you're gonna wanna do to make footage look cinematic is color correction. Now this is also choosing your color palette. This is very important when it comes to footage and making your scene kinda have a feel or a theme to it. Drag the default on here, you'll have a palette kinda looks like this. So this thing's pretty simple to use. Your lows kind of adjust the shadows and darkness in the real dark colors. The highs adjust more the reflections and whites and the mids kinda are all in between those two. You never want to do it too much unless you're going for some outrageous drug tripping scene or whatever it is. But let's just say we're, we want to make it look like Breaking Bad Arizona kind of deal. They use more of a greenish yellow tint, so we just drag this to the left. You'll see it starts getting way too much. We don't want to go that much. But we're going to make all the darkness a little bit over there. And then the highs, I'll show you that one, which is, as you clearly see, the whites and the reflections but the mids and lows aren't really moving that much. It'll still have an effect on them, but this is primarily what it's going for. So we want this one to be almost like the sun's beating down yellow. And the mids, kind of want to have it a little bit less. You don't really want to go too far with them. But that one right there, turn it off, back on. Kind of reminds me of like an arid Breaking Bad-ish kind of look which yeah, it's pretty cool. Continuing, what we wanna do is something I've noticed in a lot of cinematic movies and shows that you probably didn't, but if you have a good eye, then you probably did as well, is corner darkening. And to do that, you actually have to yeah, go to the media generator tab, go down to color gradient, and you're gonna wanna use the elliptical transparent to black. But you gotta drag it not on your footage, you have to put it, put it in a new video track above your footage. Right there. And that's it. That's it for the tutorial. No, I'm just kidding. So point one is where it's at 0% opacity and point two is where it's at 100% opacity. Uh, we drag two to the corners. And as you can see, I don't know, once you start seeing it, you'll, you'll kind of see the picture being drawn together. And then we want to drag one pretty close to two. Now I have a, I've done a lot of trial and error this and I found that the perfect distance between the two is 0.45 and you want that aspect ratio angle to also be 45 so it works out pretty good you actually see the oval going around here of the untouched footage and then you see the corners darkened to 100% which that's a couple another thing we're gonna change but I want to point out right here is you clearly see the oval right here and we want to avoid that at all costs because this looks terrible so we're gonna click on number two and I'd say a pretty good sweet spot is about half opacity, 50%. So we drag this down to about 127. That's about half of 256. And you can see that the oval becomes a little less noticeable, but the corners are still darkened. Next thing to avoid that oval, which I made a preset for it, is to blur it. Use the effect to actually blur this oval itself. We go to Video Effects, Gaussian Blur, and it's actually really close to Extreme Blur. But you can drag and drop Extreme Blur on there. And then you wanna adjust the horizontal range and the vertical range to about 20%, which is kind of the sweet spot. You can adjust however much you want. If you want the 
If you want to make it 50%, you can do that. The more blurry it is, the less you're going to notice that oval, but you're also the less you're going to notice the corners itself. So, so do that. So this is blurred. Now let's see what it looks like without. When you darken the corners, it kind of forces your eye to look at the more colorful part of the scene, which would be what you want to look at, which is the action. Usually, you're not usually you're not watching a movie by the corners at this point. So I think 50% looks pretty good. We meet. We may even go down a little bit on the opacity to you know maybe right there, about a fourth of the way. That didn't look too bad at all very subtle still drawing your eye to the scene when you watch a movie most of the time it's going to be in the 16 9 aspect ratio but if they shot it in a wider aspect ratio the most common one you're going to be seeing is 2 35 1 which is about this let's make a new video track let's drag and drop this png i got and i'll show you that so you can do this which is downloading a specifically measured PNG of overlapping cinematic bars which is probably the more convenient way of doing it but if you did you can't find this image or it doesn't look right to you there's actually another trick you can do and if you go here you can hit the crop make sure you enable snap and make sure the lock aspect ratio is unchecked so you can manipulate it Make sure size about center is checked so it's all going to be mirrored if you drag the top or bottom, which you can just drag one, two notches, and that's the exact bars you want. That blends right in. You can't even tell. Identical. But when you do this, if you've made the cinematic corners like we have, they're going to be hidden behind this black bar. So you'd want to shrink them down so they can start at the actual corners of your footage that you're seeing. So to do that, you can actually use a video effect of deforming, which squeezes it vertically on your corners, which is this track right here. So if you compress vertically, bam, you're gonna see your corners, but of course it's not gonna be right right off the bat. But this is how you can tell where your corners are. And see, look at that, no corners, added corners. Already looks so much better with the corners. So, the uh, exact amount you want to squish this is actually 0.25. Since all this is mathematically correct, it works out pretty fine. So now your squish corner started here instead of here. Alright, so we have color curved it. We have adjusted the brightness and contrast. We have sharpened it. We have corrected the color. We have darkened the corners. And we have added cinematic bars. I'm going to finish this off with some special effects and sound effects. What I'm going to do is add a muzzle flash, a whooshing sound, a gun firing sound. And the final thing is I'm going to add background noise. Right there. Sounds pretty good. I like this one. But the thing is we got to make it slow motion sound. So let's drag it about a little past the length right here. And we definitely don't want it to sound robotic. So we right click properties, lock to stretch. Yeah, it sounds a little too deep. Let's bring this back. It sounds pretty good. Okay. It's also a swishing sound. That's pretty good. I like that one. Right about there is cool. Paste. Drag it. Cool. Right click properties, lock to stretch. Just, just make that a little quieter. It's a little more subtle. A little, even a little quieter. Nice. Let's get some ambiance sound. Let's see what it sounds like. So we are going to want it to be a little bit slow motion, at least the ambiance sound is slow motion as well. So let's split it here, go with 
here. Of course, it said that to be perfect. This, now we have hold control, drag it there, hold control, drag it there, right click, lock to stretch, and then this slow motion sound is going to blend the background sound, but we do want to overlap it probably a good 10 seconds, or 0.10, probably a good third of a second. This one, 10. It's a little. Alright, good. Perfect of this muzzle flash over this fire, which is roughly going to be right here. Okay, so I chose this as the muzzle flash. Now, there's a couple ways you can do this if you have a black background. One is if you have an AVI file that has an alpha channel, pretty much an uncompressed video file. And then you can right click, hit properties, go to media, and then change your alpha channel to straight, unmatted. But but I don't have an alpha channel footage of this, I just have something with a bl recorded on a black screen, and then they compressed it to an mp4, so I have to do this a different way with chroma keyer. So what I could do is drag this onto the muzzle flash, select the color, and then have it select custom color and then choose the black Do this unsnap so I'm keeping the aspect ratio good here so I'm gonna drag this around to 180 exactly and then let's put this right where I want it Perfect. Maybe even do it a little smaller. There it is. Let's fade that out. Let's look at that in slow, super slow motion. How accurate that is. Dang, it looks good. So, go over this one more time with you. We made sure the source footage was 23.976 frames a second or 24, close enough. We matched the project settings to be that. We color curved it, adjusted the brightness and contrast, sharpened it, color corrected it, darkened the corners, squeezed them, made the cinematic bars, and also added some special effects and sound effects. And if this helped you out, feel free to leave a comment or like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.